The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Anyway, what do we have going on today? Well, let's take a look. Um, certainly a lot different than yesterday. Uh, go take a look at that dollar down 10 cents. We're back under 97. That's been the big stick for the market, uh, for the uh, Treasury Department and the government to uh, try to keep the market, everything else uh, going well. Uh, when we look at the volumes, uh, we're doing about 4.3 billion shares right now. So a little lighter than yesterday. I expect as we get this bounce to get some back and fill. Uh, yesterday when we were on the uh, show, we were telling you that we were buying indexes in the daily newsletter uh, and uh, had already bought a bunch of individual stocks. Those seem to be doing well today. Um, ended up stopping out on one of them, but uh, yeah, that's the way things go. Um, but uh, what else do we have? It's a pretty decent market. Unfortunately, we did come down with heavier volume. So this is not going to be an easy move back higher. Uh, one day does not a market make. And of course, the Chinese actually saying we're not going to war uh, kind of calmed a little bit of the market. Uh, but we'll have a lot more uh, to say. But you know what? Do we have a low end? I think we'd actually have to see something really bad happen. And of course, uh, the next big event uh, for trade is that uh, G20 meeting and what is that the 30th I think the 30th or 29th of the month so we've got a little ways to go we've got a very long expiration this month uh, so the monthly uh, expiration is on the 21st so you've got darn near you know, well you've got certainly 15 trading days in this month for those uh, options when we started the month on the 3rd. So we've got a lot of stuff going. It's going to be, uh, well, tomorrow it'll still be a week away uh, from them going delta neutral into that 21st of the month. So uh, there's a lot of good trading setting up for what we have. Um, when we talked yesterday, I, I think a lot of people were looking for a bounce in the market. Uh, I haven't seen it take more than a day or a day and a half after we get huge put call readings. And, of course, yesterday we said uh, that uh, we'd published in the newsletter in the morning that we finally had that big bounce from about, uh, it's been running about 60% uh, put to call ratio. We went to 80 on Friday, and that generally means, well, within about uh, uh, one trading day you're going to have a, a change in direction. Um, I've got a, uh, not a codicil, what is it? Corollary. Dave White's corollary. That is the uh, most amount of people will be the most bearish just before the market bounces. And generally they can't wait to jump on puts right when the market's getting ready to turn or within a day or so. And of course, if you bought them on Friday, and then got the reversal on Monday, you not only lost out of the weekend pr premium, you, you were on the wrong side of it too. So uh, a double whammy for buying puts on Friday. Uh, anyway, we were gonna have a good day. It's actually, I'm, I'm still real tired. I was, I worked very, very hard last week on a variety of different things. One of the things that I thought was the most interesting was I was waiting for the the uh, bi-monthly short sell data. And guess what? A bunch of people quit posting it on their website. Um, I talked to IEX, the other exchange, uh, the guys that uh, the, were in the Flash Crash, uh, or yeah, the uh, Flash Crash Boys book a couple of years ago. They're still doing fairly well. 
Uh, I talked to one of the individuals because they said they had an IP, uh, API for actually downloading it. Uh, well, come to find out, it was only the stocks that list were listed on the IEX. Uh, but we got to talking a little bit. So basically, they have one stock that's listed on their exchange, and that's Interactive Brokers. Uh, the the other thing was that uh, just how expensive it's got, uh, gotten uh, to get uh, short data from the exchanges. Uh, each day, I, I will talk about what and how many shares were shorted. It doesn't tell you how many were covered before the end of the day. That's the daily data. And then twice a month, the exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, actually publish the data. We get it as peons a couple of days later uh, than everybody else, but at least we get some kind of idea. Well, it was about $3,500 or three grand a month uh, to get that data from both of them. So about six grand a month if you're somebody like Yahoo or something like that. Well, they, the big exchanges didn't like that. They decided to double the rates. It's now six grand a month or so from the NASDAQ and uh, maybe eight grand from the New York Stock Exchange to get that my, bi monthly data. So it's very tough to find. Um, the Wall Street Journal used to publish tables of it. Now you can only go to one individual stock at a time, and uh, eh, it takes a little conniving to get it if you don't want to pay that eight grand a month, and who does want to do that? Uh, but one of the things that was very interesting is that they're not allowing, apparently, um, I'm going to have to do some more research to double check this, but they're not allowing to publish short data on ETFs. I found a source that shows it. I'm going to wonder in about two months, if it, or in the next couple of weeks, if it changes at all. And then maybe I've got a source for how many people are short these ETFs. But my guess was that there weren't a lot of people short uh, when uh, the market started to turn down. Uh, but we saw a lot of shorting, I suspect, in those ETFs. The daily numbers are huge. But uh, that uh, bi-monthly or twice-monthly, is it bi-monthly or twice monthly, uh, data is is going to be very interesting going forward on whether or not we even get it uh, and whether or not the big men of Wall Street have a way to short that we cannot ever find out about. But uh, eh, I'm going to talk to FINRA about it and see if there's anything else. But, uh, you know, if you're paying 100 grand a year to get data, you got to make some you got to make some money. And I need, it would be in ninety six, yeah, ninety six thousand dollars to get it for a year. Maybe they've got, if you pay for the year, maybe there's a little discount. But I don't know uh, why it's that way. But uh, yeah, many things going dark is a comment from John in Philadelphia in the Den says today. Uh, I'm always worried, but uh, there is kind of a night. Nice, there are signals that we get right before the market turns. And I always think that there's malice involved. Maybe it's stupidity. But uh, when ticks started running late yesterday and it delayed on many uh, things, I, that was about uh, as much as I could stand. I had to buy more. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute to talk about a little history and on some charts. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we come back, we're up 48 points on the S&P. Cash Dow is up 433. NASDAQ up 157. Russell up uh, 29. Uh, anyway, uh, as I said last week before I went on vacation, I wasn't going to get all uh, wrapped up into the end of the world. Markets go higher and markets go lower. Uh, but I didn't see anything that made me think that uh, it was 2007 or 2000 or 1998 or 1987 or 1929. But man, did I hear a lot of that last week. And it made me think that the real money was probably going to be on the long side when this was over. Uh, we'd already made our money uh, being short right at the top and took the easy money and, and then got ready to buy these lows. As I said, we were buying stocks through last week. Uh, and uh, bought my first ETF eh, sector index uh, yesterday. Uh, but uh, it was pretty easy to see that these things were going to turn. You know, it's up 3 or 4%. It's not a bad day's pay. Uh, but uh, and you know what? We're going to move on. We're going to do a little history, and then we're going to look at some charts. So uh, let's get going. There it's all just a little bit. History it is nothing but history repeating. Exact, you know, it kind of rhymes, maybe not exactly repeats. But uh, on this day in 1876, a mere 83 hours after leaving New York City, the Transcontinental Express train arrives in San Francisco. That any human being could travel across the entire nation in less than four days was inconceivable to previous generations of Americans. During the early 19th century, when Thomas Jefferson first dreamed of an American nation stretching from sea to shining sea, it took the president 10 days to travel just 225 miles from Monticello to Philadelphia very, via his carriage. Uh, and uh, yeah, now, we, uh, now we're mad if we don't get Wi-Fi in the first five seconds of walking in a building. Um, but uh, eh, that's the way things are. No one's ever really happy. Always looking for a little faster, a little better. But uh, man, when everybody tells me about the gloom and doom and how everything's 
going south, it seems like things just continue to get better. And I don't know why everybody's uh, focused on the doom and gloom of the world, but uh, I continue to be rationally optimistic. Markets go up and down. Markets go down about 8% on average uh, to being up 10%. And uh, eh, this depends on where you're at. But over time, not a bad living. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into some other stuff. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can call me at 877-927-6648. Uh, after the bell tonight, uh, we have uh, the big probably mover out here. Uh, it was very interesting to see everybody throwing the baby out with bathwater yesterday going into earnings. Uh, but I don't think anything has tremendously changed for Salesforce. It'll be very interesting to listen to their commentary. I don't think their earnings are going to be bad. It's going to be what they're forecasting in the future. Uh, but you know what? I don't know where they, if they really can say that things are going to be bad going forward, especially for them. They're highly concentrated in uh, the United States, uh, a little bit in Europe. But uh, not a lot of exposure to third world hell holes uh, or China or some of the others. So uh, still a, a good business. And the question is whether or not someone knows something already that uh, I do not know. Maybe they've uh, felt pressure from Amazon or Google or uh, Microsoft's Azure uh, web systems. Uh, but uh, this is probably going to set the uh, tone for all of the NASDAQ tomorrow. So uh, you want to watch that after the bell with Tom O'Brien tonight. Rationally exuberant. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Mr. Tucker. And, of course, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Greenspan and his rationally exuberant in 1996 uh, only was about uh, four years ahead of time. And that is the problem. The uh, crisis takes a lot longer than you'd ever think to develop and uh, becomes much more violent than you ever thought it could when it happens. And... Uh, I forget who said that. I did. I just said it. But I mean, I think somebody said it before me. Uh, anyway, as I said, uh, Salesforce uh, kind of getting involved uh, on uh, that after the bell tonight. Uh, let's see what else we have. GameStop. Uh, that thing's going to circle in the drain forever. And Barilla is probably going to give us another little taste of what's happening uh, in the uh, Space for. Uh, cameras. Of course, they make the chip for the GoPro and other companies like that that make compression chips. Uh, gap down uh, on the 22nd of May uh, with some huge volumes kind of back up to that level. Don't expect a great deal of what's going on in that. Another company out after the bell uh, is Guidewire Software. Um, they're back to what should be fairly decent support uh, just under 100 bucks here, I think, uh, and 97.20 is the last tick I show. Uh, but you continue to see uh, a fairly decent um, pullbacks on this market, some with a lot of volume yesterday. So you've got to uh, be a little bit careful. Uh, the downside is how many people have been shorting the living daylights out of this stuff. And uh, back, let's take a look at least the dailies. CRM. Yeah, you know what? Even in all this downturn, uh, yesterday was the heaviest day with about 14%. Not a lot of people hopping on it. Let's take a look at what we've seen for uh, Salesforce. And uh, eh, about two and a half days to cover. So not that much, but it's still significant. Um, you've got, uh, what, uh, 73 million shares. Does that look right? Yeah, 73. Oh, 735 million in the float. And you've got uh, just under, and just under, uh, duh, 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 what, one and a half percent of the float? Yeah. So it's not that bad, but uh, because they don't turn out the volume like some of the bigger players out there, two and a half days to cover. Let's take a quick look at uh, Guidewire and see if we've. Got a uh, 
somebody wandering around a powder keg with uh, sparklers. Uh, let's see what we have here. And 15% yesterday again, not piling on. Uh, now, this one you got to watch because it's got 11 days to cover. If someone's on the wrong side of this thing uh, and earnings turn out good, uh, I wouldn't be surprised this thing would pop up up to 105 again, uh, just on the 10 days to cover. Um, going to be hard to play this. I wouldn't be getting into it before if you didn't already have a position in it. But let's lots and lots of shorts. Probably going to get picked off. Be back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, um, yeah, we'll take a look at stuff. Uh, Tiffany on the heels of their conference call, a nice bounce today. Uh, got to 95.85, but, you know, now about 93.21, nice bounce on it. But uh, eh, they're thinking everything goes fairly well. Uh, CSIQ got a big contract for solar in Texas. Uh, I haven't looked at this in a long time. It's bottoming out. Not a lot of volume, though. Uh, it's going right back up into resistance. Um, hog is in the news, so we'll take a quick look at that. 
see if there's anything going on in the chart. Yeah, you're still in a downtrend. I don't think anything changes that. I saw some really ridiculous articles over the weekend about Harley Davidson selling lots of big Harley Davidsons in India because everybody rides motorcycles. You know, you've got to be thinking about buying a Harley. And of course, what they don't tell you is the average price of those motorcycles is 500 bucks. Um, but uh, eh, always interesting. Uh, cruise uh, line stocks are uh, kind of the ones eating it today. Um, NC, what is it? LH. It's down about 4.5% today. Norwegian cruise lines. Um, and most of this is based on uh, restricting cruise line trips to Cuba. If you haven't been there, well, you haven't missed much. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a nice place and the people are fine, but I mean, it's a, another crumbling relic of communism. Uh, probably just as exciting as going to Venezuela. If you can escape with your life, you're probably lucky. Uh, but uh, that continues to move on. Anyway, Norwegian Cruise Line uh, got down to 51.56 and kind of getting back up there with huge, huge volume. Uh, let's take another one, RCL. Doo -doo -doo. And this one's not as bad, but uh, you gap up on fairly decent volume going back, uh, what is this, uh, to, to uh, May 1st. Got up on 3.8 million shares. You're down in there today with 2 million shares. I don't know if they ever got that much uh, actual business to Cuba. I think when it first came out that you could go to Cuba, I think that was part of it. Uh, but they continue to uh, make uh, evil around the world. I don't know if it's good to reward those kind of folks. Um, but uh, yeah, just one of the other things. Let's uh, check in with the biggies on Wall Street after getting hammered yesterday on mostly antitrust news. Uh, you had some huge volume and some huge shorting. Uh, as I'm showing here, the little black part of the uh, volume bar is how many shares were shorted yesterday, and actually as a percentage, fairly decent uh, as an absolute number, pretty big. In fact, why don't we do, go ahead and look at it that way. I'll give you the numbers. AMZN. But anyway, as soon as you see everybody piling on short, and yeah, the last couple of days on Amazon, you had uh, uh, Thursday last week, you had 25%. Friday, you had 21%. Uh, yesterday, you had 19%. Uh, generally, a low comes in when everybody piles on. Uh, it's averaging about, eh, I'm going to say the week before, about 18 or 16, somewhere in there. Uh, on the monthly data, um, got uh, what? Got a half a day to cover. Not many people buying. Uh, shorting $1,700 stocks that are generally buying puts and calls. Uh, but again, that's it. Uh, let's check back in here with the volume. 4.6 million shares. Let me update that just to make sure. 4.65 uh, billion shares. So huge amount of volume, no, uh, but probably a huge amount of short covering for a lot of people that piled in on Friday and yesterday thinking the end was nigh. But uh, not such uh, luck. Um, what else do we have uh, going on out here? Got a question about the SMHs. Uh, I was thinking about them this morning. Um, but you know what? Other than a one-day pop, I didn't think there was going to be a lot in here. Uh, this did come down with fairly decent volume. So there's got to be a little bit more out here. And I don't think it's the regular names. Like um, Micron's doing fairly well today and some of the other ones. But I think there's a lot of second and third tier uh, bananas uh, companies out there. And those are the ones really uh, kind of languishing and having problems. But so far, like in the SMHs, you're up on a little less than 5 million shares compared to you know, being down about 6.7. So you might get yesterday's volume. Uh, the real power back here was uh, the heavy down day of the 20th of May that had about 19 million shares. So you kind of get on it, kept on trying to break it out. It couldn't, 
Uh, what you really want to be looking for is any close now above $100.58 basically puts a cork or a pin in this down move, at least for probably a few weeks. Um, I'll look at the options tonight, but my guess is that the options are going to play out that at a minimum, we're probably going to hold somewhere around uh, the close today. Uh, and at a maximum, we could get back up to 2850 before expiration, which is not a lot. What are we talking about? 50, 60 points on the S&P cash, which would, eh, off the top, maybe about a 50% bounce off those. Uh, I do think that a lot of people think that the market's just going to rip back up to the highs are probably sadly mistaken. It's probably going to be a long, tough slog, and there'll be a lot of news articles and um, uh, very uh, whippy trading as we go along. But I just don't see uh, the end of the world that everybody continues to focus on. And uh, that probably means that you'll continue to have heavy days of shorting uh, followed by today, days like today of huge rips uh, in a market where a lot of people just get far too bearish for market conditions, uh, and then they get turned around. Uh, let's see what else we have. i got a couple of emails coming in here. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, okay, well, we looked at IBM yesterday. The uh, question is, what else do we want to look at out here? And uh, yeah, let's just take a look at the NASDAQ, because I think I've got... Uh, is that in there? Is that in my scans? Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll pop through the most important ones on. It's out here. I haven't looked at Adobe in a couple of days. Take a look at that. Uh, big volume down yesterday, a little pop today. Uh, volume not all that exciting. Um, got back down to 257.56 yesterday uh, in uh, trading around 265.92 right now. Um, you're back in, but you've got really the completion of an ABC on the way down off that 291.70 high. Uh, back around 265 uh, in March and April, this thing just never really had any volume all the way back up to the top. Um, it's kind of coming back here, and it's probably a little fairer value around the 265 area. We'll be back in a minute. We've got a lot of, we'll go through the most of the NASDAQ stocks as fast as we can in the next second. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on out here? Well, we'll go through a few of these NASDAQ stocks. So we said uh, looking at the uh, Adobe. Uh, ta -ta -ta. And uh, analog devices, nice little pop out here. Got to 95.51 yesterday on the low. Uh, back right now just above 100 bucks, 117 cents. Uh, Autodesk. Yeah, this thing, not much of anything. He had a huge volume day down yesterday. Um, found support right where it should, where this big gap up was on the 1st of April. Uh, did with about 4 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 3 million shares. So you were a million shares light. Hot today, though, on just 1.2 million shares. So not a lot of push on that one either. Align Technology, of course, these guys make the invisible braces for teeth. And... Uh, yeah, kind of a nice little turnaround. Still have a lot of volume from yesterday. Broke the previous low back here at 271 on April 17th um, on heavy volume. So you at least probably need to come back and retest that at about 175-ish. Uh, Ape Mat Applied Materials. Uh, nice bounce today. A little bit more volume than it had yesterday. Um you were really looking on Friday for about uh, anything less than 11 million shares. You only had a little less than 8 million on Friday yesterday. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yesterday you had 8 million shares. So you were able to test that May 13th low fairly well. And now you've got a little pop up here, but probably not a much. Uh, these things are probably going to have to uh, consolidate so much. Or a little bit. Yesterday, the biotech space uh, was one of the better ones. They were having a conference out there and talking about a lot of the stuff going forward. A general positive tone. Uh, a big pop yesterday in Amgen and followed up by a little more today. Let's take a quick look at the IBB. And uh, we have uh, 1.8 million shares. Um, so far, compared to about 2 million shares. So not much going on there. Amazon. Uh, two, two, two. Hang on, we are looked at that. I don't see much changing here. A lot of volume yesterday, so you think that that's going to at least have to go sideways or go retest it for a while. Um, let's take a look at Avago. Uh, these uh, cell phone stocks really kind of took it on the chin because of China. Uh, you got your first bounce today on 2.2 million shares so far. And it's uh, about 2.9 million shares yesterday. And, um, you know, your big low out here at 250 came in with 6 million shares. Really, you, know, you went sideways for four days and then this pop. But I think some of these could easily pull back a little bit if uh, anything happens in the market. Uh, let's take a look at Baidu. I haven't looked at them for a while. Um, not much of a bounce at all, of course, in China. Things probably looking a little weaker. BIIB, the Biodin, uh, Biogen, IDEC, just going sideways. Uh, Bookings.com, uh, kind of interesting to see the uh, 
cruise ships down so hard, but this up strong and uh, not much juice in it, but certainly a big candle out here taking back uh, five, six days of uh, trading back to about the 23rd. So not a bad day. I don't know if there's any specific news on it that made it do that. Uh, Charter Communications, CHTR. Uh, this one not backed off at all. Went sideways through all the hell and uh, actually made a new and higher high today. And it looks like it may even hold above that 387.41 uh, from the 17th of May. So keep a close eye on Charter Communications. Costco. And duh, 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 what do you got? A little pop. Eh. Eh, anything that probably has to do with China, probably looking a little bit better. Uh, duh, 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 anticipating the third gap up before it takes another rest. What are your th thoughts on SNAP? SNAP. Um, well, you certainly have the big move out here. Um, not enough volume, though, is the problem I would look at. Let's take a look at this along a little longer. Uh, we've been talking about this. The th uh, there are basically two big gaps already, and then you're looking for the third uh, possible gap, and then that would be the end of it. Uh, if you get that, uh, you'd want this thing to creep up without having a gap. Uh, this thing gaps up tomorrow, next day, or three days from now. Uh, and you've got, you know, like a 10% uh, or 5%, something like that gap higher, I'd probably pull the trigger instantly if I was long this. Um, you want it just to continue to creep up. Same thing in the GLD. Uh, one of the things that you've really got to watch out for uh, is you've got two nice gaps. Um, what you really want to see in gold is it consolidate this out and pull back on lighter volume. Uh, one gap higher, and you've got a three-gap play in the GLD, and generally the play on that is it will instantly go back and fill all those three gaps rather quickly. So it, it's a nice pattern to, to uh, look at, and the reason why is that you don't have to act until it happens. You don't have to say, hey, I'm worried about it gapping higher, because if it gaps higher, you still have the opportunity to sell it. Uh, if it pulls back on light volume, that's exactly what you want longer term. But in shorter term, if it gaps up one day, let's say in the next three or four days, and you get yet another gap like we've had, uh, then generally, the, the I'd say about 80% of the time, you want to take your money and run. Uh, because those will be it. If you wanted to short it, no real sense here. Uh, probably 75% of the time you get two gaps like that, you're going to get a third. So that's uh, got to be one of those. Uh, anyway, uh, so back to SNAP. Um, yeah, like I said, you got two nice gaps in there. Um, if you want to hold it longer, uh, the next reporting period is August 5th for SNAP. I guess we can go back to that. Uh, um you know, there's nothing out here that sells you, says you want to sell. You've got your two gaps. One's kind of been filled a little bit, which is exactly what you're looking for. That is, especially if you want to compare this to GLD, you would like for it to kind of come back to that gap and have no sellers and then continue on higher like this. Because you can, you know, as long as you don't gap one more gap, big gap, higher, generally these things can just continue on. Uh, the alarm, though, should be the big gap higher in both SNAP and GLD. Without it, if you just continue to kind of meander higher, um, just sit on your hands, which is exactly what you want. Expedia, after booking.com, uh, we'll see what we've got in Expedia. Nice move on it, not a lot of volume either. We're going to the break. Uh, we'll be back. Got plenty of time to email or give me a call at 877 6648 and path at tfn.com.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that have transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're looking good here, feeling good. Up uh, 48 points on the S&P cash, let's make sure that's correct. Yeah, 48. Uh, 436 points on the Dow. The Nasdaq's up 163. Russell's uh, up 27. So we've got pretty much everything that we're looking for in a, in a bounce. Uh, but that does not put it in a low. We want probably a little bit of pullback on light volume to set that up. And again, a lot of this is news driven. So you don't want to get too uh, wound up thinking that the market's either going to go down or go up. Um, but uh, I think you can probably say that at least between now and the G20 meeting at the end of the month, that maybe cooler heads will prevail. This news will dial down a little bit, and we'll start looking at those earnings that we talked about uh, earlier. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, doo -doo -doo, where did I do that? Um, Salesforce after the bell and Amberella, and then of course uh, tomorrow morning uh, before the bell we've got american eagle outfitters don't expect a lot out of that i don't see a lot of people going to the mall uh, vera bradley uh, after the bell tomorrow night start getting a few more stocks uh, that could move the market but uh, they're going to be it's really i think uh got sienna wednesday morning uh, a few others out here some new ipos on Wednesday night, I thought there was uh, 
next week. Maybe it's uh, eh, kind of a light and variable, I guess, for a little while. So not happening, a lot happening to drive the news, not a lot of economic news. And I think if it just quiets down, everybody will get back to earnings. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on that CRM. It will set the tone, I suspect, for the NASDAQ for tomorrow. Uh, and uh, listen to Tom O'Brien in the 4 o'clock hour uh, to get the play-by-play -play on that. In the meantime, you want to sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel. Same bat channel.